Hi, my name is Vladimir Petkovic and I'm a computer artist from Serbia. I live in San Francisco and work as a creative director for Adobe Substance 3D. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Substance Painter to create textures for a sci-fi vehicle. Then we'll use the same 3D model in Substance Stager, where I'm going to show you how you can compose this 3D object with a photo. We'll play with lights, with the camera, and some other settings in order to produce a photorealistic rendering. After that, we'll jump to Photoshop, where I'm going to show you some of the basic post-processing techniques to make your render really shine. So stay tuned and let's jump right into it. All right, we're going to start with Substance Painter. If you have never tried this uh, application before, it is used for uh, texture creation. So essentially you're able to bring your 3D model and uh, create textures, which then you can export and use them in uh, different environments. So for instance, you can go to Maya, 3D Studio Max, maybe a game engine like Unreal. Substance Painter is gonna allow you to export your textures for any of those uh, different use cases. Let's go through the user interface quickly, and then we're going to start creating textures for this science fiction van. On the left-hand side, we have the tools palette. So we have the paintbrush, eraser, we have the projection tool, and a few others, which I'm gonna cover later on. Right next to it uh, is the assets panel. So in the assets, uh, the first thing you'll notice are these materials. So these are uh, called substance materials, and they're based on the so-called PBR standard, which stands for physically based rendering. So all of these materials have been created in Substance Designer, and they are uh, mostly parametric in nature, which means that they do not necessarily depend on the resolution. Uh, so you can dynamically change the resolution up or down, which is uh, pretty powerful uh, because their size is quite small. Uh, PBR uh, materials are able to represent any kind of physical surface in nature and, and, and then some. Uh, and then we have different categories, uh, which I'm going to cover more in depth. But just quickly, we have smart materials, which are essentially packages of different substance materials along with some masks uh, attached to them. So it's a very powerful way and uh, to kind of speed up your process of uh, texturing uh, a 3D model. And then we have smart masks, we have a variety of different filters, we have brushes, um, alphas, uh, textures, and finally we have uh, the environment maps. Environment maps are actually quite important because they are used to illuminate your scene. So here in the middle uh, is the viewport, so you're able to see your 3D asset in the viewport. And th the 3D asset is actually illuminated using one of these environment images. So these are essentially 360 panoramas, which are uh, HDR. Uh, so uh, they have um, a dynamic range. And so you're able to change the exposure uh, uh, dynamically, change the intensity of those lights. And of course, you can bring in your own HDR lights. So just to illustrate how this uh, looks like, I'm going to go to the right-hand side in the display settings, and then here in the environment settings, I can change the environment opacity all the way to 100%, and I'm gonna drop down environment blur to zero, and now you can actually see the panorama, which is uh, you know kind of wrapped around the scene. If you hold shift and right mouse button, you can rotate the panorama, and you can see that the light is actually affecting your object as well. And this is going to be very important when you when you start working on these materials, especially on something like metals, because metals are essentially reflecting the whole environment. And this is why it's important to see how they are going to change if you you know uh, work under different light conditions. So let's say that instead of this panorama HDR, uh, we go to I don't know something different. Let's uh, let's maybe change the, to this desert scenario. You can see that all of a sudden it looks completely different. And I can also turn on the shadows, um, and then let's rotate this uh, this panorama, and you can see that uh, you know the, the object. Even though we're just using the default clay material, it looks significantly different. And this is the importance of of light in in three D in general. This is why you need to think about it all the time. Um, all right, let's go back to the panorama that we have been using. And I'm going to turn off shadows for a second, drop down opacity to zero. All right, 
And uh, well, let's continue with the display settings since we are here. So if I go down, uh, you've seen that we can change, we can turn on the shadows. Um, here we have the camera settings, so you can change something like focal length. So uh, maybe change to something like a fisheye or maybe a long lens, uh, whatever works for you. Let's go somewhere in the middle, like like this. We have uh, different post effects like depth of field, uh, tone mapping, lens distortion. I'm not going to use those for a second. Um, and we can activate, uh, you know, things like subsurface scattering, color profile, etc. Uh, you can change the quality of the of the viewport by changing the filtering. You can turn on the mesh so you can see the wireframe of, of this 3D model. And those are the display settings. Shader settings. Well, the most important part of the of uh, you know this tab here is going to be displacement. So essentially, here you are able to turn on displacement and uh, and you know change the scale and the quality of the real time displacement. And we're going to use this uh, a little bit later. And finally, we have layers. So in the layers. Uh, panel, you're essentially able to add these substance materials and stack them on top of each other, just like you would do with, you know, uh, regular 2D layers in Photoshop. And uh, again, just like in Photoshop, you're able to attach masks to uh, to those materials. And uh, therefore, you can, you're can you able to create a very complex system of materials and create very sophisticated textures in the end. Um, as soon as you create any kind of material, you're going to be able to see properties of that material down here in the properties section. So just to show you how this works, uh, let's uh, go ahead and just create a, a new uh, material. I can maybe just drag one of these, maybe aluminum. I'm just going to drop it in here uh, for, for a quick second. And then you can see that now here in the, uh, in the properties, we can change all of these parameters like base color, metallic, roughness, uh, and so forth. And we're going to go in detail um, you know, we're going to cover all of these uh, parameters when we actually start working on the textures. And then we have texture uh, set settings. And uh, before I explain uh, this panel, let's go to actually to the texture set list. So this 3D uh, model actually has multiple texture sets. So what does that mean? If I click uh, F1, you can see that the viewport actually uh, now is split, and on the left hand side, uh, we st we're still able to see our 3D model. But on the right hand side, you can see the UV map of the uh, currently selected texture set. So the tires are one texture set, and they have a dedicated UV map. So if I click here on the eye icon, you see I can hide them. And uh, therefore, you, you, you can see that the whole asset is actually split into multiple texture sets. So in the end, when I export these textures, I'm going to get um, you know, uh, one texture per texture set. Or rather, I'm going to have a package of textures for each one of these uh, you know, texture sets. So the tires are going to have it, uh, its own texture set. And then let's say something like the body of the, of the vehicle uh, which is split into the frontal part, the interior, the rear part, you have the bottom, details, glass, interior. All of these are going to be independent texture sets when we export them. And you can define the resolution of these texture sets if you go to the texture set settings. So here in the texture set settings, you can change the size of the currently displayed uh, you know, texture set. So, for instance, if you want these tires and its texture set to be uh, in 2K resolution, you can set up this over here in the size, or you can go up or down. So, of course, if you go up, the texture you're seeing here in the viewport is going to be much detailed, but of course, the scene is going to be slower. It's not going to be as performant. So if you're working on, let's say, a slower machine, then you're able to change the size, uh, to drop the size to something like, let's say, 1K, and uh, the performance is going to be much better. However, when you're ready to export these textures, you're actually able to change the size to a higher value, 
and then Substance Painter is going to recompile everything and authorize your textures, which is incredibly useful. Uh, down here, you can see all the channels for the materials you're using. So you see here in the properties of the material, and I'm actually, I, I actually need to select this texture set in order to, to select the, the material. And then now if I go to the properties down here in the material, you can see that we have all these channels. So these channels are defined here in the texture set settings right over here. So you can add more, for instance, if you need something like, uh, I don't know, maybe emissive texture set uh, uh, channel, you can add, uh, you know, this channel here. And so now if I go to properties, you can see that now we have the emissive uh, channel. So for instance, if I want to make uh, the headlights to glow, now I'm able to, to do something like that. All right. Uh, and then if I go down, you see that we have this option, bake mesh maps. So this is one of the most important uh, features, uh, which, uh, and also something that you're probably gonna, going to do first before going into, uh, you know, pr producing textures for your 3D asset. So it's, uh, it's essentially a texture baker, as we call it. So if I click on it, uh, you're gonna get this uh, new window. And uh, here you can select which mesh maps you want you know, Substance Painter to, to bake for you. So what does baking even mean? Let's say that you have been working on a high resolution mesh. Maybe you have used the ZBrush and uh, you have you know, an extremely detailed uh, 3D model, which has millions of polygons. And of course, you're not re really able to use uh, something as dense as that in the, in the production. So you're probably going to create, uh, you know, a lower resolution model by using retopology. And so you are going to bring your uh, a new model, um, your low poly model, so to speak, in Substance Painter. But that model is not going to have all the fidelity of the high resolution mesh. Well, using the, uh, the texture baker here in Substance Painter, you're able to use this high definition mesh. And as you can see here, you can actually load your high definition mesh and you can extract some of the details from that uh, high resolution mesh onto the low resolution mesh uh, that is going to be used uh, in the production. So the, first of all, you can use the, you can create the normal map and the normal map is gonna bring back all those fine details. And furthermore, uh, you can extract some of the so-called information maps like ambient occlusion, curvature, position thickness uh, and so forth. So let me show you uh, some of these, um, you know, information maps and what do they even, even do? <clears throat> so if I uh, go here in the upper right corner, I'm gonna change the material uh, view into something like, let's say, ambient occlusion. And uh, let's click on F2. So F2 is gonna hide the UV map so we can only see the 3D model. Um, so essentially now we are looking at the baked ambient occlusion map for the whole 3D model. Uh, so Substance Painter essentially has analyzed your 3D model and it has created this ambient occlusion map. So it has determined which areas are occluded and it now uh, you know, extracted some values out of it. So dark areas are going to be occluded, white areas are not occluded. So why is this important? Well, let's say that you want to use something like a smart mask and you want to add, I don't know, something like dust or dirt, which is accumulated in these occluded areas. Well, you're able to use this ambient occlusion uh, to, uh, you know, to essentially map out only those areas where you want uh, the material like dust or dirt to show up. Uh, and traditionally, without these maps, you would have to manually paint all of these areas which as you can imagine is, uh, you know, quite a bit of work. Um, uh, let me show you an, uh, another one. So maybe something like a curvature. So again, Substance Painter he has analyzed your 3D model and it uh, figured out which are the, where are the edges of your 3D model. So you can see all of the edges are now bright. So they're kind of exposed, uh, all the extreme areas. So all the, the edges we can see in this bright color and everything which is flat 
is this dark gray area. So let's say that you want to create something like, uh, you know, damaged edges or maybe rusty edges. Well, you can use curvature map to, to quickly map out uh, only those areas. And furthermore, we can use something like thickness of your um, 3D model, like, like here, or maybe the position in space, uh, the world space normals. So this is going to tell um, Subs Painter where it's up or down, left or right, uh, stuff like that. I'm going to click M to go back to the, the full material mode. And since I have already baked uh, my uh, information maps, I'm not going to do it again. But essentially, before you start texturing, you probably want to go into the bake mesh maps. And then if you have your high resolution mesh, you could, you're going to be able to load them here, change the size of the information maps, and then finally go to bake. You can either bake a single uh, texture set or all of them at the same time. Now we are ready to start working on the actual textures for this asset. If you'd like to follow this tutorial, you're actually able to do so. You can go to Adobe Stock and if you choose 3D section, search for Van and you're going to be able to find this exact model minus the sci-fi elements. Um, but this model that I made, you're able to download and use it for free. So therefore, we're going to be able to follow up this tutorial uh, pretty much using not the same, but very similar model. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that whenever you're trying to texture something that exists or may exist in real life, it is probably a good idea to um, create a mood board or a reference board. So let me show you a couple of um, examples that I've gathered. So here in this XD document, you can see a variety of pictures uh, showing this exact model of a van that I modeled and also a couple more images. So just using this uh, as a basic reference for the materials that I'm trying to make. So, you know, different types of metal, plastic, uh, maybe the, the rubber on the tires and different elements. This is going to help me quite a, quite a bit. So I'm not starting from scratch. All right. Let's go back to Painter. We'll start with something very simple. Let's drop in uh, something like a chrome material. So let's use the same one that I've, uh, that I've used before, aluminum. I'm just gonna drag and drop uh, this material somewhere on our model. So maybe right over here. And as soon as I've done that, as soon as I've dropped it into the viewport onto the model, you can see that actually this material has been applied to the whole texture set. So if you remember, if you go to the texture set list, um, I've dropped it on the body front texture set. And so it has been applied to everything that this texture set contains, all the, all the 3D models which are contained within this texture set. Well, I don't want this aluminum to be applied to everything. So in a very similar fashion as you would do in Photoshop, I'm able to go in my layers and then create a black mask. And so now, since we have a black mask, we can't really see our material at all. And this is where you're actually able to start working with your brush. And so as you can see here on the left hand side, the brush has been selected. And so since we have the white value, if I paint, I'm exposing the material underneath. And this is because I am painting across this black mask. And at this point, it actually makes sense to go to the uh, brush tab over here in the assets, and you can choose any of these uh, brushes. And we have a wide variety of, uh, of, of different, really incredible brushes for all sorts of um, of uses. So let's say that we want to do something like maybe something like this artistic brush. So you can start painting. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And you can actually use your stylus. So if you have something like vacuum tablet, uh, that's probably the best way to use your uh, uh, your substance painter. And 
And so you can see how powerful this can be. But I'm going to use a, a lazy method here. So once again, I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to add a black mask again. Therefore, I'm going to erase everything that I have painted. Instead, with the mask selected, so you're able to select the material and see how now we have the properties of this material exposed, or you can select the mask itself. And now we actually have the properties of the brush since we are able to paint on top of the, of the mask, right? So we can change them like size, um, the flow, etc. But what I want to do is I want to actually create a new paint layer on top of this mask. So right mouse button, and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add paint. And so what this does is I'm essentially able to paint across this paint layer and then I can hide it or even change something like opacity, as you can see. And I can have as many of these paint layers as I like. So add another one, maybe change the brush, do something different. And now you can see I can hide them independently. And you can see how powerful this is. But I'm going to use this in a little bit different way. So I'm going to delete this one. I actually delete this one too, and I'm going to create a fresh one. What I'd like to show you is a different tool. So here on the left hand side, I'm actually going to go to Polygon Fill. And this is going to allow me to fill parts of my asset using different modes. So I can do Polygon Fill like this. Or for instance, I can fill the whole uh, mesh uh, sections, for instance, like this whole thing over here, which is very powerful as you can see. And that's exactly what I want. Or I can also use the UV map. So let's say that I've used the, use the UV chunk fill as it's called, and I can actually click on chunks and fill them that way. See, for instance, the door, use the second door. So another very easy and, um, and fast way to kind of fill in uh, sections of your asset with the certain material. All right. I'm going to stick with the, the mesh fill. All right. And um, also, if this wireframe is too intense, you can go to display settings, scroll down, if you remember. We have the wireframe, and then I'm going to draw down opacity. All right, so just looking at my reference here, what I'd like to do is I'm going to fill in uh, maybe this grill in front and maybe a few other elements. Uh, I'm improvising here, so let's see what happens. And also, I can also go to my texture sets, and I'm going to hide all and just expose this um, active, uh, actively selected texture set. So now I have a better idea what is actually included in this texture set. All right, show all. Let's see. I'm probably going to use the same uh, metallic or chrome material across the texture sets, so I can do a different thing as well. I can go here, right click, and I'm going to use this option. I'm going to create instances ac across texture sets. And here, Painter is asking me, okay, where would you like to instance this material? Which texture set would you like to use? So let's see. I probably know the news on glass, but everything else seems possible. Maybe not interior. All right, click OK. And so let's see. When you click on a different texture set, you can see that now we actually have this material here, right? However, one thing that I've 
forgot is that this mask is actually going to be translated on all these texture sets as well. So the, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to delete this mask. And now see what happened. Since we don't have any mask, this material has been, you know, copied, instanced rather, across all of these texture sets, minus the glass, which we can hide for a second. And so now I can independently create different masks, uh, you know, in different texture sets. So for instance, over here in the body front, what I can do, I can actually create maybe a folder, drop this into folder, and I'm gonna call this maybe Chrome. And I'm gonna do the same thing, add a black mask. But now it, this mask, since it's not applied on the instance material, it's not going to affect anything else, right? <clears throat> and same as before, I'm going to create a paint layer and just select what I need here. And let's go one by one. I'm going to hide everything else so it's a little bit easier to read just like this. I'm going to go one by one and see where exactly we would like this chrome to appear. All right, let's go to body interior. So it's, it's this one. I'm just going to lay it like this for now. The rear part of the van. Actually, don't think I even need it here. But I'll, I'll still create a folder. Chrome, black mask. So I'm not using it. Bottom. All right. Probably gonna add some grunge under here or use something like black metal. But I, you know, I can, I can leave it for now. Let's see, details. Well, definitely over here but maybe not in everything. So let's see. Details, again, create folder, Chrome, black mask, paint layer, and let's start editing. So I'd like to add these guys, the headlights, I can also activate symmetry. So right over here, symmetry. So now when I am adding things to my mask, they're adding added um, on the other side as well because we're using uh, mirror symmetry. Let's see what else? Maybe these hinges. Glass, I'm probably not gonna use it all. This is the interior, probably not gonna use Chrome here. Mechanism. One thing that's really incredible about uh, Substance Painter and I've worked close in Substance Painter is that you get this beautiful um, and immediate feedback, visual feedback, which makes it really uh, amazing to, to, to work with. It's just so easy. Get all these little screws in here. Mm 
maybe the either side of this. So we one of the cables like that. All right, let's go for now. Let's see tires. Probably gonna use something darker. But let's start with this. <clears throat> Black. Symmetry. I'm just gonna add an element or two. All right, let's see how our UV map looks like here. So if I add only some elements, you see this is where UV chunk fill is useful. I can only fill, uh, you know, some UV shells like like this. You see, and since the symmetry is uh, activated, it should slide on the other side. Yeah, like that. Do the same thing here. Maybe something like that. <clears throat> All right, great. Let's uh, show all. And this is our first material that we have applied. Oh, almost. It seems like I'm missing a little section here. Yeah. And using the same method, I'm now gonna uh, you know keep adding basic materials and start filling in different uh, sections of our object. So I'm going to go with something probably along these lines. So create some kind of, uh, you know, car paint material, add some dark metal, add a rubber material. And then in the next section, we're going to start adding crunch, scratches, something to kind of infuse life into our model. So it doesn't look, uh, you know, as a generic 3D model. 